Why do you think your messaging got so viral? I didn't put a magic spell on the world. I'm not a magician. By the end of this video, I will prove to you that Andrew Tate is a master hypnotist and did in fact cast a spell on the world. This is a three-stage plan. And that every step of the way has been very well calculated. A plan of this magnitude requires an elite squad, the most important of which to Andrew is Iggy, the master of spells and shadows, and the top-ranking member of the War Room. The War Room is my own secret society. He styles himself as the greatest hypnotist in the world, but you'll never see him swinging a pendulum or performing on stage. He can only be found inside of the walls of the War Room. How does a man compel the world to become the most Googled man on the planet and gain the devout worship of those who will listen? Hey. The answer is neuro linguistic programming. The history of NLP is as twisted as Andrew's past, but before we dig into this form of hypnosis, we'll have to know a bit of vocabulary. Frame, which means a particular point of view or perspective. Not to be confused with frame and dating, that's more related to composure. I was most powerful when I was sad, when I was depressed, when all these things. Mm -hmm. and, and the difference is what's the framing. And a model, a mental model. It's your unique perception of the world constructed with language. I only, I'm only gonna construct a mental model that allows me to be as powerful as possible. Neuro-linguistic programming can be as simple as changing I wish to I will, and be as complex as FBI interrogations and business negotiations. If I had to define NLP with only three words, it would be communications changing perception. To illustrate this, let's compare Andrew Tate six years ago and his communication style to now. I'm intelligent enough to understand that if you want to learn something, you have to shut your mouth. You know, it's very easy to talk and constantly, you know, get attention and talk, talk, talk. You don't learn anything that way. See, his hand gestures are mild and his volume and tone remain flat. But no one would be talking about my dad in mainstream consciousness if I wasn't who I am. No doubt. So I keep him alive. Yeah. And it is my son's duty to do exactly that for me, to keep me alive. The man who got banned and broke social media big tech monopoly. The femme-centric systems has deliberately installed frames in their Which mind. Which femme-centric system? Every right? single system is femme-centric. That is more attention grabbing. To truly understand neuro-linguistic programming, we have to know where it came from. The practice of neuro-linguistic programming started with a mathematician and a linguist. No, not their father, Emery Tate. There we go, John Grinder. These two guys studied the communication of therapeutic wizards in an attempt to learn how they communicate to impact change in the lives of their clients. They had the idea to build a uniform and learnable model of communication that they could then teach and learn themselves. And so through their research, they wrote the first book on NLP in 1975, The Structure of Magic. I didn't put a fucking magic spell on anybody. Many years ago, I stumbled across another one of their books called Reframing. But just look at the marketing on all these books. I set it aside because I thought I had better books to read without knowing that there's an immense power in these tools to change not just other people's minds, but your own. Prominent NLP users include Tony Robbins and some people even speculate Donald Trump. All right, boy, but where's the hypnosis? The purported self-help group, many now say, is a cult that sexually victimized women. The organization included a secret sex society where the slaves were branded, brainwashed, and forced to have sex with the group's founder, Keith Raniere. Nexium was founded by Keith Raniere, but the real person of interest is Nancy Solzman, the president. Way back in a previous life before I met Keith Raniere, I used to teach neuro-linguistic programming and Hypnosis. The company sold courses called Executive Success Programs, which is basically just self-improvement. And they would manipulate people using illusions of grandeur, groupthink, and neuro-linguistic programming communications. Everyone wore sashes. We were supposed to bow when we entered the room. We were supposed to clap and say, thank you, Prefect, who was Nancy Salzman, and thank you, Vanguard. Vanguard was this guy, Keith Raniere. Even though NLP started as a tool for therapy, unsavory practitioners have taken these techniques to entrance and woo crowds and to implant new frames in their targets to bend their perception without them ever knowing. And instilling a mental frame inside of the female that makes her understand that it's really not that big a deal. Like the frog in the boiling pot, their new frames stack up over time until they are okay with the idea of being enslaved and branded. So how did this all work? Well, all successful attempts of at persuasion need some type of hook. And for Nexium, this was the exploration of meaning, which may be the perfect example of therapeutic neuro-linguistic programming in action. Okay, so tell me what upsets you. For my EM, I chose to work on my anxiety around auditioning. 
So Nancy had me close my eyes and she said, go back to the first time you remember feeling that anxiety. Can you bring that feeling up now? And what does it feel like? Is it a pressure or is there movement? Does it change your understanding of the situation? And once I made that connection, it seemed as if the fear lifted. Does it feel better? Okay, we're done. Thank you. But where's the pendulum? Where's the spinny thingy? Where's the hypnotism? See, that's the power of neurolinguistic programming. It's speech hypnosis. Andrew Tate entranced an entire generation without them ever knowing it. You will learn the power of hypnosis, the magic of storytelling, and begin developing a skill set of exquisite precision communications that you will use to transform yourselves into men of purpose, men of will, men of power. Knowing what we know now, it couldn't be more obvious, but hypnosis and entrancement is actually more common than you think. Think of hypnosis as a trance-like state of full captivation, and think of your attention like a processor chip in a computer. If my video isn't firing up your processor chip, you hop into the driver's seat and click off the video. But if my video overclocks your processor, you take a back seat while I get a direct highway to your subconscious mind where all the change occurs. Uh, I certainly didn't do that with magic. This is how advertising works. This is how influencers work. This is why platforms are built to be banned from every single social media. Tate uses rapid hand gestures and bombastic speech in order to overclock your processor. But what is an influencer but a role model without the personal responsibility? Everybody is trying to manipulate you all the time, including me. Other common hypnotic states include watching a movie, driving a car, cuddling with someone you love, which is why when you're in a relationship and you two are in tune, you start to adopt the mannerisms of your partner without any forethought. This puts Tate's rhetoric about the matrix into perspective, but I know many of you are wondering, does he use hypnosis to traffic women? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. For context, this is a text message he received from one of his girlfriends after she found out she wasn't the only one. My love, I want you to know that I see the truth of your destiny. You were never put on this earth to follow the ideals of lesser men. You are the greatest man I have ever known, and the world is more blessed to have you in it. The fact you exist means there's still hope for us. You're the last real-life hero we have on Earth, the top G. Without strong men like you, women will have no real protectors, and a man such as yourself should not adhere to the basic constraints of society. You need to stay strong, to radiate freedom and knowledge for all of us. Don't let anyone try and cage you. You are entitled to live out your fantasies because the world is yours. Wow. That's the beginning. Heroes have always been rewarded with riches and women since the dawn of time. It appears to me that entrancement in the subconscious highway are just neurological mechanisms for social influence, which brings about philosophical questions about influence and hypnosis. But you have to understand, do you think I have your interests at heart? What am I trying to manipulate you into doing? Recently, Tate held a war room event in Romania called The Test, and he describes it as a rite of passage. I decided to put together a test for war room members. And I put a call out to war room members and invited them to the mountains of Transylvania and said that you can come to a business conference because I'd like to talk with you. That's all I said. It's a test. I welcome you all to the test. In three days from now, there is a cage fighting event. And every single one of you has been paired as a professional fighter. This is the beginning of the path. Decide if you're gonna do it or not, and you can write yes or no. The beginning of the path, he says, which I find to be very interesting because Hustlers University and the War Room have been active for many years, which leads me to believe that the men of the test were new to the War Room and joined as a result of ste step one of Andrew's plan. But stepping into the ring is a brutal ask. What's the justification? True happiness as a man comes from strength. You're only going to have strength if you have been tested. The way you become stronger is you destroy a muscle, right? You destroy the muscle, it grows back stronger. Best thing about this is that I made it very, very clear to all of them, their chance of survival was zero. You're fighting a professional who's been preparing for this fight. You've never been in the cage before. You are not going to win. So the first thing I asked myself was, what happens if you say no? And what Tristan says surprises me. Everybody who left the test, those who didn't fight, those who did fight, came out with a positive experience of the test. Minds were blown. I got guys hugging me afterwards saying, well, thank you for putting this together. You've changed my life. You've proved, you've shown me something about myself. Everybody left happy. Even those who didn't fight had a positive experience. Minds were blown. You've shown me something about myself. 
The first day, the men were told what was going to happen, and they were offered the chance if they want to fight or not. The men who said no, they had to have long conversations, long, long periods of staring in the mirror and understanding why they're too afraid to fight. Andrew Tate's a hypnotic magician. I didn't put a magic spell on everybody. I rest my case. Thanks for watching my first video. Please like and subscribe. See ya. Look, little loves. A spider.